Hey everybody, it is January 8th, 2008. I have to remind myself that because I almost said 7. Um, I'm Sonic Sons, and I'm here to talk about artificial intelligence and whether or not it's possible and random ethical considerations, which somebody just told me to talk about in one of the comments. Dang you, person whose name I forgot, but thanks for your comment anyway. Um, so, um, where are I going with this? Well, I previously did the Singularity video, the five part video. Um, with all sorts of crazy things that may happen, I believe Werner Vinge was his name. He said something along the lines of, within 30 years, we will have the technological means to create artificial intelligence. Shortly thereafter, the human era will be ended. Meh. Um, well, apart from how much that may totally change things, how much it may not, or how much it may... I don't know. AI, artificial intelligence as opposed to IA, Intelligence Amplification, the much more ethically okay thing of taking people that already exist and making them much smarter. And then, presumably, all our moral framework would still work the way it does. Um, so AI is the idea, in case you didn't know from the title, that, um, that we could make a computer which is fundamentally just as smart, just as conscious as a human. Now, this is weird. Um, you raise the question of, well, is, is that even possible? And one of the arguments against it is the Chinese box argument. And it goes like this. Say um, there's a guy, and he's in a box, no one else in there, and there's a slit in one side of the box, and there's a slit in the other side, right? And through the one slit comes a piece of paper with a scribble on it. You have no idea what this scribble is. But he looks at the scribble, and he looks at this rule book he has. He opens the rule book, he looks at the... Uh, computes a couple of things, and then, on a blank piece of paper, writes his own little scribble. And he pushes it through the other slot, because the rule book told him to. More scribbles come in, more scribbles go out. Now, on the outside of the box, there are some Chinese people. And the Chinese people are feeding in not scribbles, but actual Chinese characters into this box. And from the outside, they get proper responses in Chinese. And they think to themselves, aha, the box speaks Chinese. The box understands Chinese. Except, of course, the man inside the box has no idea what he's saying. He's just following the rule book. So it appears to understand Chinese, but... Uh, really doesn't, doesn't understand anything at all. Now some people say, well, the system as a whole understands Chinese, just that the one man inside the box does not. To which the response is, well, let's say the man were to get rid of the box and memorize the rule books, now he is the system, and so he could considerably just keep doing the same thing. Um, people could write Chinese down on a forum and he could respond with the same thing with the rules that he's memorized. And does that, uh, does that mean he understands it? What if he speaks it? Hmm. Is it possible he's still not understanding? This would give us the very interesting dilemma of a man who speaks fluent Chinese without actually knowing Chinese. I think this cuts quite into the thing of, of, of what is knowing. What is... You get into AI, you get into singularity type stuff, you get into some big, big questions. Uh... All sorts of things. Is it possible for the man to speak fluent Chinese and not know that what he's saying? Well, it, it's kind of possible. Because here's one thing. Regardless of whether or not it's possible to create a true AI, it is definitely possible to create a fake AI. It is definitely possible to create something which looks like an AI uh, to a certain degree of um, investigation. Right? Like anything, like if you open up a chat window with somebody, and someone says, you know, hi, how are you? Now, for that instant, you believe you're talking to someone through the chat window, right? For that one instant, you've passed the Turing test. The Turing test, of course, being if you had a, a guy, and it's traditionally at a, like a computer chat window or something, so there's no face-to-face -face contact. If you had a guy at a computer chatting with somebody, and he doesn't know if it's a human or a computer, and then after a long chat, can he figure it out? And if he can't figure it out, then the computer has passed the Turing test. Or Turing, I don't know how to pronounce it. Um, 
So any computer at all, I mean, any, any, you know, <laughs> simplest program in the world comes up with the, the Hello World program, right? You know, and it prints out Hello World, or it prints out, you know, change the text to, it prints out, Hi, how are you? And for that instant, it's passed the Turing test. And you think, oh, I'm talking to a person, right? Uh, presuming you didn't know you were taking a Turing test in the first place. And then, you know, maybe you respond, and it might kind of respond if it has some programming behind it. And then, and then you know, after a couple sentences, you realize, oh, wait, this is a computer. <laughs> but for that instant, it looks like it's a human consciousness. Heck, this works to all sorts of things that aren't even AI. Uh, if, you, if you ever hear, like, you know, uh, someone talking in the other room... And you know, who's that? You walk over and it's the TV and someone left the TV on. For that moment, you thought that the TV was a person. Okay, we're all, we're all quite comfortable with that concept. Obviously, you walk in and you see that the TV is a TV uh, and not really people that were standing there. Um, but see, that kind of gets muddled when you go into AI. And you start talking to this thing... And it's like, okay, so, you know, it can hold up that one sentence, and then obviously you put on program, maybe it'll hold up two sentences. You know, hi, how are you? Oh, I feel good. Oh, that's nice. Computer could do that. Sure, sure. You know. Like, even that would be a little complicated, because you have to go for, what if the human says, oh, I feel good, or I feel fine, or I don't know, how are you, or like the thousands of ways it could respond. But you could, you could reasonably make something that... That at least seems okay. At the very least, you could have the computer just say, BRB, whatever, it doesn't know what you're talking about. And then the human will just sit there and be like, oh, I guess he's, uh, he's just doing something else right now. <laughs> um, but, um, okay, so, so... So we're chatting with the computer there, and like for, you know, for an instant it can fool you, and what if it can fool you for two instants, and what if it can fool you for, for, for a minute or two minutes, or... How far does it have to fool you before... It's it's real, or can it ever be real? Maybe it were just you know it, it gets more and more and more uh, tricky, and, and harder and harder and harder to see. But on some fundamental level, um, it's not conscious. It's it's not a real mind. Problem though, what is a real mind? Because in the TV example, we have this nice thing with physical space. And if I walk into the other room expecting to see two people having a conversation, I can quite clearly tell if there's two human beings with arms and legs, hopefully, I mean, they could be amputees, having a conversation, or if it's a television over here and two fictional people having a conversation. They're, they're, they're very different, very fundamentally different, right? And not just in appearance, but in activity. For instance, if I talk to, say, the two people that are sitting there, then they will respond to me and we can have a three-way conversation. If I talk to the TV, the TV is not going to care. Unless it's perhaps some sort of advanced AI TV. Ah, there's another thing. There was a, in Fahrenheit 451, um, there was a deal where uh, the, 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 the TV, right, will actually adjust to you. And they talk a little bit about the technology behind this, fictional technology, of, uh, you know, it'll actually like, look into the camera and say your name. Like, oh, what do you think, whoever you are? And uh, you respond, generally with a simple response, but still you respond, and then they respond back, you know? And then the, and then the show go, is ongoing. Um, so how do you know the difference between the TV thing, which responds to you, and, you know, a live video chat? <laughs> now suddenly there's no meat space to make it quite obvious. Um, or heck... Maybe we'll invent the meat space. Maybe we have a robot that looks just like a human and it's the freaking Terminator and it's, you know, and it's Arnold Schwarzenegger all talking to you and you're like, wait, is this Arnold Schwarzenegger the governor or is this Arnold Schwarzenegger the guy who's going to destroy all humanity? Hmm. Wait to see if he time travels. No, but like, you know, it just cuts to the crux of, so, what, what is consciousness? What is... Well, is that what consciousness is? It's this thing that I'm experiencing right now. Ah, see, that is the problem. Or a significant portion of the problem. Because the only absolute true way to know that something is conscious is to literally be that something. I can be certain of my own consciousness because I'm experiencing it right now. 